Hi everyone and welcome to this morning's webinar. Uh, but as usual before we start, may I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know can see on your screen. We actually I can see David's as well because we've had a we've had a sort of change around in the office and so we're not facing each other. We're sitting side by side, which is so sweet. <laughs> As you know, in, seriously, as you know, this can be a very risky business, so please, please uh, don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. Okay, here we are. This is myself. This is obviously David. Uh, in this webinar, and in fact, the, um, we've got two other webinars coming on later today. I know some of you come along to all of them, which is fantastic. If you don't, and perhaps you don't know of the other two, you can sign up to them at my site, annacooling.com. The second webinar will just is on Forex again. That's just before the, um, it's kind of around the, the uh, New York Open, but for Forex Open. And then the third one is at 3.15 our time here in London, um, uh, in the UK. We're not in London anymore. And we look at day trading and we tend to focus on the indices and, the, um, uh, and some commodities. But in all the webinars, they have one thing in common, and that is um, that we look at the markets through the prism of volume price analysis, supported by our fantastic quantum trading indicators. And I know they're fantastic because we've got some of my lovely customers in the room today. So there we are. Volume price analysis, everything you need to know about volume price analysis. It can be found in uh, on the in the books that are on Amazon. And for Forex, what we've done, we've bundled them together and put them into what we call the complete Forex trading library. Because well, the VPA is the um, is the technical analysis side, it's the chart reading side of, uh, of of trading. Because to that, you have to also bolt on what happens. You have to understand what's happening in the uh, in in the fundamentals, the news releases and related markets. Now, since then, I suppose you could say there's now a fourth strand that we have to add to our understanding of what is going on. And that is how uh, the political risks are impacting the markets more and more. And I said this many times, and David has said this as well, um, we don't ever remember a time when the political risk um, has impacted uh, the market so much. I mean, there's always been geopolitical, you know, the the uh, the the event the uh, the black the black swan event in terms of political risk I, I don't know you, a war suddenly breaking out or you know some terrible catastrophe but as I said and we were always aware of that and of course that's going to impact the markets but it is it's pretty relentless at the moment and of course the biggie is uh, I know the Brexit but it's also the um, the uh, the the situation going on between uh, China and the US. But everything else, and we do cover political risk in the books as well. Anyway, we do cover the political angle, certainly in the 3D book, but it's all there on Amazon and you can buy the whole bundle for uh, 9.99. That is the ebook version. Um, what I said earlier, VPA is the, is, if you like, the, the chart reading, the understanding the charts, the technical analysis side. This is a slide from our uh, Forex program where everything is covered in, in great detail. It's from it's what we call the relational module. And basically, it's really having an understanding how all these markets impact one another and how they interrelate at the moment, as you know, with the uh, very much a risk off environment. Sentiment is very, very negative. Uh, the bond market is, uh, is to the fore, yields are, are crashing, equities are not looking too happy. And uh, it's all played out in, in Forex with the individual currencies and the currency pairs. And here, because it's, it's Forex, these are the four particular specific indicators that we've developed for the Forex market. We've bundled them together in the currency dashboard. It's the CSI, the matrix, the array, and the heat map. But you can just buy one. You don't have to buy it as a dashboard. You just buy one. You can bundle the, the dashboard. Or you, we've got bundles of all the under indicators. Or you can buy the full package. And what you get with the full package is that when we develop new indicators, you get them for free and they're added to the package. So the latest one was uh, we've done an, uh, an index for the British pound. So if you're a full package customer um, and perhaps you haven't been into quantum labs lately, uh, you can just go and add it. It's added to your package and uh, you can enable it there. You get 24-7 support for life and 
and by the way all the upgrades to the indicators are included as well and it's all guaranteed by a seven day money back guarantee at the moment we have mt45 ninja trading view and the great news is we actually started working on trade station which is a bit for us it's a bit like uh, coming home because um, uh, many years ago, well, not many years ago, but eight years ago, David, seven, eight years ago, yeah. we did have Trade Station, and this is a, this is, it's a, um, it is a very nice uh, platform uh, to, uh, to, to you. So, and we're working on porting the indicators there as well. All the details of the indicators are at quantumtrading.com. You can, uh, you know, find out their videos, support pages, uh, pricing, the, the special bundle deals. So, you know. Uh, if, if you haven't investigated them, then hop over there and, and you can read all about it. And as I mentioned, the Complete Forex program, um, which we, we do reference and we draw on some of the lessons that uh, are in the program when we talk about them here as well. The program does include the full package of, of indicators. And if you've bought anything from us, one indicator or, you know, or a little bundle, you always get a credit if you want to upgrade to the package, uh, to the trading program. And it really, what's the program? What does it tell you? What does it do? Well, first, first of all, it tells you everything you need to know that will allow you to trade Forex with confidence. And uh, this is the, the, uh, the website. It's Quantum Trading Education. Dot com and that's it anything you want to add to that david have i missed have i missed anything out oh oh yes me here we are um my analysis <laughs> anacooling.com uh, and uh, there are contact pages by the way on all these in on all these websites if you want more information right let's put that away because obviously what we're here here to do is to look at the markets what's been happening what is uh, going on at the moment and what much more important what is likely to be happening next and where can we find some uh, perhaps some trading opportunities now that's what i'm before we do that um i want to just go over one of the uh, elements of vpa um that uh, there are basically five pillars to bpa and uh, perhaps those of you who don't know have not read the books it's essentially it's obviously price volume support and resistance, candles and candle patterns, and time. And what I want to look at at the moment is actually a little bit about candle and candle patterns. We all know the, the classic patterns of um, uh, up thrust hammers, engulfing candles, you know, they, they are the ones that are, most traders would recognize immediately. But there is also another candle pattern, which is a, a very, very interesting one. And I suppose it's kind of called an inside day candle. And it's been playing absolutely brilliantly in uh, the Euro Aussie on the daily charts. So it's it, the, the Euro Aussie has so many, it's got VPA lessons, it's got uh, um, from the perspective of trends, but it's also got this uh, how you can uh, spot this particular pattern, whether is it a reversal, is it a continuation pattern and also how our indicators actually will help you um, in your decision making because what the indicators do what, the reason why David and I have developed them is really they are to help us is to cut down on the analysis and to, to highlight those potential opportunities so the indicators they are there always as a support but as I said it just come together beautifully on the Euro Aussie chart but before i do i'm just going to pass over to david thanks darling and a very warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world it's um it's a little bit better here today it was actually a dreadful day yesterday pouring with rain but hopefully it's um it's going to be a bit brighter today and apparently very warm by the weekend so maybe a bit of summer on our way you never know great to have you with us today and um just to add my uh, two pennies worth if you have any questions uh to put across to us then please just drop them in the chat chat box we're happy to answer them on air for you and uh, if they're longer questions sorry if they're longer questions we'll answer them on air if they're chat if they're shorter questions we'll answer them in the chat box or i was distracted by uh by what was on the heat map um so that's that and uh, it's great to have you here if this is your first time very warm welcome and i can see we've got lots of uh, of the existing customers in the room as well so warm welcome to you too I'll pass back to Anna. Primarily, we're going to focus on MT5 platform, but I have the Ninja Trader platform running on my machine, so we might flip flop between the two depending on what's going on. 
but I'll pass back to Anna and we'll get going. Of the four indicators, the forex specific ones that I mentioned earlier on that form part of the currency dashboard, um, you don't have to have the dashboard to, uh, you know, of the, put it this way, the dashboard, it's fine. We have a lot of customers who have all four indicators, but if you've never used a forex specific indicator and the dashboard is maybe there's just too many to start with, the one that we would suggest you start with is actually the CSI. And that's what David is going, that's what David uses and has been using to look for uh, trading opportunities. I can see over at his screen, he's, what are you looking at the moment? The, uh, he's looking at the Aussie yen at the moment. Uh, Aussie yen very much tied to sentiment. There's been a huge buy of, of yen uh, over the last few days. I mean, the, you know, the trends in the, in the some of the yen crosses has just been tremendous. But I'm just looking at the um, heat map because now the, these, uh, these pairs are ranked and they this ranking moves all the time but yesterday in fact until recently the top two pairs were the loony which is up here the, the dollar cad and the second uh, uh, the second spot was actually taken up by the uh, the euro Aussie. and in fact it's fallen since spot two which is exactly what i want because i'm actually short this particular pair at the moment and what I said uh, earlier about, you know, using indicators, that the heat map will draw your eye to those pairs those that are currently either very, very overbought, obviously at the top, or very, very oversold, as we can see here. I'll just push it back again. You've got the pound yen at the bottom. No surprise there because the pound yen's been driven both by uh, sentiment, market sentiment being what it is, i.e. buying of the yen, but it's also been pushed even lower um, because of the problems uh, with the uh, with Brexit that we have here in the UK. But I want to focus on the Euro Aussie. And actually, there's, there's a, a nice move going even further lower with this particular pair. Just want to take this template off so that it's a little bit clearer. I don't want one that's quite right. Here we are. Euro Aussie. And I have spoken about the Euro Aussie in other webinars, is it two or three weeks ago? And it was really in the run up that we can see here in this uh, in this move higher that we saw here. And we can see here we've got rising uh, rising prices and a ton of volume going in, really high volume going in. Then we have a little bit of a, pull, a pullback. And then we can see here these three candles where the volume underneath it was kind of dying, dying away, not by a huge amount, I accept, but we know there's weakness just from, I said, talking about candles, candle patterns. When you have candles with wicks to the tops of these candles, there is selling coming in, there is weakness coming in. And obviously after such sort of a relatively strong trend, at this particular point, you'd be looking, even just from a, a price action perspective, say, mm, maybe we're reaching a point where perhaps this is um, this is going to, uh, you know, looking to turn over, as it were. Now, this candle here is quite interesting. This was actually the Australian elections, if you recall, it's a couple of weeks ago, David, when um, the, there was a very, uh, it was an unexpected win for the. Um, uh, um, uh, for the uh, ruling party totally so there was a there was a gap down but as usual with gaps the gaps were filled but in the filling of the gaps look at the volume the volume is much much lower you've got relatively widespread candles so from a vpa perspective you think oh right okay things aren't looking you know they're looking a little bit weak but are they ready to roll over now at the time <laughs> Uh, from the heat map perspective, the Euro Aussie was pretty much sitting at the top of the uh, of the ranking. It was there or, or thereabouts. So, you know, from what the indicator was saying and what the chart was saying, you could say, mm, are we reaching a point where possibly we are going to have a reversal? But the candle that really kind of sort of not, um, well, the, the most significant candle after this, uh, the filling of the gap is this candle here. Now it's not a volatility candle because you have the same effect with a volatility candle. Volatility candle is when uh, you have price outside of the average true range and you get the little arrows coming at top and, top and bottom. Now what tends to happen with a volatility candle, as is happening here with what we call an inside date, is you have a candle like this, sometimes without the but the wicks, it's, but it's the, the range of the candle. And the subsequent day's price action retreats to within, it's an inside date, it goes within the, the, the spread of this candle. This was volatility, but the same thing happens with volatility. Now what's interesting with an inside date candle, 
and it's called in, inside day they happen on other time frames as well but the the interest i'm just sticking to the daily chart because i'm trying to find a a major reversal point but as i said the same would apply to the the faster time frames and that is this so candle number one goes into uh, retreats into the spread of the candle now there's some debate in the sort of candlestick uh, uh world is is it a reversal is it the is it telling you it's a reversal or is it actually potentially a continuation well it, it's I, I don't know what the figures are i know there's a guy out there who's who's a real expert on candles and he's actually calculated it and i'm going to have to have to look it up i think it's thomas thomas Bukowski. um it's it's not 50 50 is it more continuation is it more reversal and i think actually thomas does a lot of work on stocks and i think it's probably depends on the market that you are looking at so that's one uh, candle going into uh, into the um, uh, um, spread of that candle. What's interesting with this is then look at the, it. This happens on subsequent days. So you have this one, then you have uh, this candle here again back into the spread. Then you have a third, then you have a fourth. Now at that point, realistically, you could say, well, price is really not being able to go higher you can look at the volume underneath the candles certainly under the this candle here which is more of a doji rather than than, than an up candle now even on the down candles don't have a lot of volume and as we know we need volume uh, to drive the price both higher and lower so the other interpretation of candles when they retreat to within the spread of a of a, of a of a previous candle is that there is a degree of indecision the market really can't make up its mind whether it wants to carry on higher or whether this is going to be a a the start of a, a, you know, a decent reversal this is where another element of vpa comes in because support and resistance now we've got the resistance up here and this candle doesn't really touch a major uh, support uh, resistance line, but let's take that to the top of the candle. It's this line here. Let's have a look roughly. Uh, 162.35 support and resistance lines. These on our indicator, this is our indicator here, quantum indicator. These are plotted. They are inch perfect, as it were. They are very, very precise. How the candles then uh, um, meet those lines you have to be a little bit flexible sometimes they'll you know they'll peak above but they'll they'll come back it doesn't invalidate the the line itself it's just the way the the price action interacts with that particular uh, resistance line but it's the support line here because as we see here we can see this kind of you know indecision in these candles and you look at that and you think now is that likely on the balance of probabilities is that going to be a continuation or is it more likely to be a, 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 a reversal? Well, this is where you would uh, be focusing your attention, is this support line here at 61.20. Also keeping an eye on what's happening on the Forex indicators. I haven't looked at the CSI, but I know uh, in the last couple of days, the Aussie has been very oversold. So, you know, the market is looking to buy Aussie in some, you know, in some pair or another. So this is the support line. So what you would do is you would wait for a break of this line. If it was going to go the other way, you would wait for a break of the resistance. But this is how you would interpret or begin to interpret a candle pattern that is known as an inside day. And the same principle applies if this were uh, a volatility candle because you get similar kind of price action you get uh, momentum coming into the market price moves out of the average true range price retreats into within the spread of the candle and then you bring in the elements of support and resistance and looking at obviously at the volume this is the most interesting candle in this little sequence still within the spread but look at the volume underneath it really nothing to write home about so you could say well you know this is really not going anywhere other than lower assuming it then breaks the, um, uh, the, the the support line however I must caveat that because this was actually bank holiday as well David wasn't it that one this yeah. uh, yes we always have to remember holidays and seasonality but this was uh, bank holiday so uh, so uh, you would expect the volume to be lower going to the other indicators uh, that, that we have the point at which 
the trend dots these are the of all the indicators we have this is the one that is closest to the price action and we can see here they were blue blue it was like in a gray then it blew in the center in fact it, it's the position of the dot on the candle now this is a, a blue dot but you can see here this is weakness because you've got a, a wick to the top and the dot is in the middle middle of the candle if the dot was under were under here then that would tell you probably that this could be a continuation then we have a gray one but it's also bank holiday then we have a red candle but still a gray dot that they haven't transitioned but look at where the dot is it's at the top of the price action that's telling you it's going to push it lower this is what i've been waiting for a break of this uh, support line which we've had yesterday's price action we have increasing the volume is is certainly moving higher certainly you know this is quite distorted this uh, there's a lot of buying in this trend higher <coughs> and now what's going to possibly holding up i have a 200 uh, um, uh, fractal uh, moving average here where's it aiming for it's aiming here at certainly at 60 uh, 38 and i really need to see this uh, uh, this selling you know, continue higher even still if this is going to carry on lower and this is short term uh, price objective medium to longer term well you've got the vpoc here back at 5812 which is actually the was the precipit uh, was the uh, trigger for this move high this was a very very successful breaker breakaway trade as i said if you look at the trend dots blue 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 then we the trend monitor always uh, kicks in after the trend dots it actually hasn't transitioned yet so this move lower this little bit of, of price action here what we want is that's on the daily chart if you actually look at it on the four hour chart here you've got uh you can see the move lower here this is uh, this is a, a break from the volume point of control so this is you would, you would use a another time frame to actually help you potentially with uh, um, an entry to what you are seeing on a slower time frame now i've used the daily and the four hour so if you like this is if you're going to hold this position for maybe two to three days the advantage of this position as well is that if you're going to hold it uh, over you know overnight or over two or three days is you do get positive rollover rollover is one of those things that is where the broker pays you the uh, the interest differential and it's something you really have to be aware of i mean if you were short pound i was short pound yen and thank goodness it moved the way it did because um i wouldn't you know the amount that was being taken by the broker was uh, i wouldn't say it was eye-watering but you certainly have to factor that in in any trade now what's happening on but even on a on a if you wanted to trade this on a day trade just as a as as a quick scalp as it were you would move right down to maybe the three minute chart here look at the candle patterns again what's going on in terms of uh, in terms terms of vpa but here your entry you would use something like the renko chart which is a non-time based chart and the same would apply you would look for a situation where you um the, the price has reached some kind of, uh, of resistance you wait here uh, for the trend dots to change color also the uh, the trend monitor to uh, to uh, to change color and possibly take a, a you know a, consider the entry now previous to that you can see here this is sideways this is in congestion um, and you know would you have been stopped out on some of these yes of course you would have done but you know your your stop would have been very very close and what you do the the price you pay for finding a trend that we can see at the moment you take a small series of small losses because the payback is when you do get a really strong move either in the faster time frames or in the slower time frame that is when you really do hit pay dirt and if you what i've done is i've written a little bit about the euro aussie on one of the facebook pages i think it's forex trading one where i compared the the, the chart of the euro aussie with the chart of the dollar cad and the dollar cad is still up here although they were both at the top why your option you would have, you, it would have been better to choose the euro aussie over the uh, the dollar cad which is still moving higher because the dollar is being moved so that's my lesson on 
um, candle and candle patterns, anything you want to say. If you've got any questions on that, please just drop them into the chat box. If there's something that you didn't particularly understand or you want further explanation on, just, uh, as I said, just, uh, uh, just let me know. David, is there anything you want to say to that? <laughs> Oh, okay. Right, so that's my little contribution on there. Just go back to the core, yeah, sure, no problem. I, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, David, what, so I haven't actually talked about, uh, I haven't put on the Camarilla levels as well. They will also uh, give you uh, some clues as to which of the levels uh, price is likely to sort of bounce off, uh, you know, key support and resistance. Because this, I really just wanted to talk about. Uh, as Thanks, darling. Um, just to um, thank you for that. Um, uh, another masterclass, if I may say so. Um, just to pick up on the four hour chart, which uh, caught my eye because Anna mentioned about uh, getting in. If you're not a reversal trader, in other words, you're not looking for extremes starting with the CSI and you're more comfortable getting into a trend once it's underway, then the issue is identifying opportunities to get in and um, those candle patterns and the related volume, which will help you on that decision making. Obviously, there are other factors to, um, to in play. But the one that caught my eye here was the blue candle, which is one, two, three, four, five sessions back or so. Yes, that's the one. You had the congestion. You had the market clearly pretty bearish. And then you get uh, an attempt to rally on high volume. The market falls back exhausted. You get a nice deep wick to the upper body, a narrow spread on the body itself, um, but a very good volume underneath. What is that telling you? It's telling you the market makers are selling into weakness. They're dumping, getting out of the market. They've had to maybe acquire some, particularly in terms of stocks. You see this a lot because what happens on the way down in a stock fall is that uh, sellers move in. They're selling pretty heavily. The market makers have to absorb that selling to make the market. They absorb it, but they have to get rid of it somewhere before they take the next leg down, and that's what they do. They dump it move the market up, heavy selling in that move higher, buyers move in thinking the bottom's been reached, it hasn't, the market falls back, collapse, they're trapped in weak positions, ton of volume underneath and it's an entry position. It's just a classic example, you see it all the time in every single market and every single time frame. And that's the place to look for if you're not a reversal trader, you're not looking for breakaways or you're not looking for full-blown reversals and you are more comfortable jumping onto a trend, you've got tighter stops, so you're not putting so much risk on the table, then those are the sorts of candles and candle patterns to look for in all markets. Then, of course, using multiple time frames, you're looking at all the other aspects you can see here. Very strong area of what was uh, support, the uh, the solid line there at 60, 69. Next one down, that one, there we go. And uh, we've gone through that now. That was um, in the last four hours or so. You can see the market sort of retested a little bit. So we've got a very strong platform of now resistance overhead certainly on the four hour. What's also interesting about this, this chart uh, co collapsed down a little bit is that clearly in terms of the volume point of control, we've moved through a relatively low region of volume in the move lower. But now what's happening is we're starting to move into a higher region of volume in the chart lower down. There we go. We're starting to come into it. So for the next, what is it, 30 or 40 pips, we've got some decent volume, certainly in terms of the four hour. So you're always looking at multiple time frames for the messages, and certainly the message from there is, well, if it's going to move through, it's got to have strong volume. You're going to get strong volume because we've just gone through the London Open anyway, so that's going to be rising. But to penetrate that, we need to see the volume rising in the next period to breach that. And if the market pauses at that level, then the four-hour chart is giving you a heads up as to one of the reasons why that is, certainly from a volume perspective at any rate. That's really what I wanted to highlight on the four hour because it is so important. It, you know, we talk about reversals and breakouts and everything else, but if you're a trend trader and you want to jump on a trend, those are the sorts of candles you've got to find. Add on this type of candles, particularly on a stock, is what happens is in a waterfall um, where you know there's, there's a lot of heavy selling. What happens is it's it's um, it's either well, it's two things. It'd be short covering. Or um, it's it's um, in traders, investors jumping in, thinking, oh, there's been a big fall 
it looks cheap great i'll jump in i'm getting a good price but in fact it isn't it's actually it's actually a weak place because this is not you know there's there's no sign that it is actually a reversal but moving to the uh, to these time frames this this price action here that we see here this congestion phase this is the uh, on the daily chart this was the um the gap down lower that we had uh, as a result of the uh, of, of the um, of the election. So you have this congestion phase. What this congestion phase is representing is the price action that we've had in this inside day candle of this candle here. And the break when it came, as I said, it had to break through this uh, this support line here. Where is it? Uh, 61.20. If you go down to the four hour. Where are we here? 61. Uh, we've got 61, 61. So we're about 40, 40 pips away. But as I said, if you really wanted, to, it was round about here actually when the trend monitor actually changed. But it still went had sideways. So if you're using the day and the four hour, and you had the VPOC here, you saw that price action. You analysed the price action that was on the daily chart. You then had the four hour. Would probably, you know, you would certainly wait until you had a break from the uh, from the volume point of control, and also the, I've got the 200 MA as well. So you would have sacrificed about uh, 20, 30 pips, but no. And uh, as I said, a really, really nice move. And on a day trading basis as well, it's a nice little move lower if you were just going to be in for a very short period of time. Right, that's what I wanted to say. Can I move over to you now? Are you you've been looking yeah. at uh, so? Let's go and see what's been happening on the faster time frames. That's it. You should see the, uh, yep, I can see Anna's screens now, which is nice because I couldn't see them before, but I can now. So I definitely know you can see my screens too. Uh, I mentioned before that um, uh, just as we started, I've been uh, following the Aussie Yen this morning. And um, it's uh, it's certainly an interesting one, both from a longer term perspective and certainly from an intraday perspective. We've had the nice rally. We had the congestion phase. Uh, let's just pop up. I've got the three. I've got the five minute, ten minute, fifteen minute across the top, and then down at the bottom, I've got the thirty minute over here. I've got the sixty minute here, and down onto the daily. Maybe if we start with the daily, um, that's the that's the trend we've seen over the last few weeks, um, driven by sentiment. Yesterday was shaping up to a similar sort of pattern of events with uh, quite a strong move lower in the afternoon and then it then the markets rallied we saw a decent reversal in terms of equities and that was also reflected very much in the yen complex of which the Aussie Yen was one and that was basically the price action on the day which we've seen before but this is the sort of price action that you're looking for after we've had such a strong move this was when uh, back in uh, mid may so we've gone from mid may uh, right the way through and uh, it's it's just been sorry i beg your pardon back into mid-april up here sorry beg your pardon and into may and this is what we're looking at now in terms of congestion building certainly from a daily perspective we're looking at the volume that's now coming in we're looking for potential buying that's coming into the market which we saw certainly in this sort of array of candles here where the market's fallen but it's getting to a point where we're getting deep wicks to the lower bodies. We're starting to see decent volume associated because so there's buying coming in. Then you're looking at little signals like this where we've got a, a down day, but the volume was very light. I think that was maybe Monday anyway. Um, and now and yesterday we saw some a, a, a rise in volume, decent wick to the lower body. And we're starting to see development of potentially a reversal. And what we're looking for in terms of that, certainly from this perspective at any rate, is first of all to set some levels where we would be comfortable getting into that particular opportunity should it develop. And just eyeballing it and not using anything else, you'd certainly be looking up through through a level around here, I guess. So maybe 76 bot 50 is a is a comfortable level for you to get in. Now, the other advantage of getting in around this region is if we get up to this level, then as you can see on the daily chart, certainly from a volume point, uh, volume point of control perspective, the volume histogram is pretty lightweight all the way through here. So in terms of any recovery, 
and the corollary to that is if we're looking at a recovery then we're looking at this as an opportunity to to make some money and how far is that likely to deliver for us that particular opportunity if we're going to jump in well if we're looking at it from 76.50 up to 77.50 the math is pretty straightforward and the next area that the market is likely to run into difficulty is as we get higher we've got the volume point of control which is way up here at let's move that out of the way up at 79 but in the move back up to the volume point of control we have some pretty serious uh, resistance areas this dash line this heavy dash line is very similar to the mt4 mt5 in other words it's based on price and what the accumulation and distribution indicator does on ninja trader it actually prints that line ever wider the greater that that area has been tested either as support or as resistance and then obviously works the inverse as the market then reapproaches so the thicker these lines and these are very thick indeed this has been tested repeatedly and held at the time and therefore now becomes resistance to any rally so the thickness of the line it is purely based on price but the more this is tested uh, it becomes stronger it's like it's absorbing strength and it's printed in that way accordingly this level you can see down here this is very uh, narrow it's very thin so this is a, a much less uh, a much less strong area of either a support or resistance and as you can see we're actually moving through that this is ex exactly at 60, 76 so we're starting to move through that today may close above it may close below we'll have to wait and see but certainly some bullish sentiment in the market right now and that's also reflected in terms of indices i think the um, the es is uh, is ticking up on globex at the moment so there is a little bit of gentle uh, uh, return to risk on sentiment but in terms of an opportunity that's really how you would analyze a chart in terms of where potentially would i get in where am i comfortable getting in and of course i'm not even looking at the indicators yet i'm just looking at this as a chart and price action and volume then it's the case of looking at the chart in terms of where that opportunity may take you is it enough for you is 100 pips enough given that you may well have to lay out a decent amount of, uh, of risk on the table in terms of a, a stop loss below in this case it's fairly straightforward as to where you'd put your stop loss <coughs> excuse me it would certainly be below this level here so you're looking at a minimum of uh, 50 60 maybe 70 pips is a 70 pip stop loss sufficient for you to give a hundred potential 100 pip uh, return I mean it may go higher than that it could go up to 78 before it starts to struggle a bit but struggle it will certainly it gets to this level and as it pushes deeper up here then we've got this ton of volume more volume building we've got another very strong level here and then of course you've got topped off with the VPOC up here as well so a 300 pip move up here is probably going to move fairly quickly through here then start to move into congestion phase as it gets up here ultimately if it gets out the other side and up into the 80s then again it's going to be a way and clear because there's very light volume up at this region and you will have cleared all this region of, of potential price resistance up here just eyeballing it at 79.50 so that's just really um, an analysis of the daily chart but that could be a one minute chart a five minute chart could be anything it just gives you a sense of what to look for after you've seen strong trends we talk a lot about congestion phases what they mean the importance of them how to use them how to how to understand them how to apply them uh, your trading tactically to those regions but they are the single most important region that you will see on a chart it's usually the inverse traders are looking for trends all the time what we always look for we're always looking for congestion phases because from congestion phases trends are born as we the, the analogy we use is of uh, is a fishing analogy where uh, where the trout and, and other uh, fish return to their spawning grounds and that's where they breed and that's where congestion that's where trends are born they are born out of congestion phases congestion phases happen for all sorts of different reasons many many and varied accumulation distribution phases head of news whatever it may be and that's all associated with volume and then you're looking for the opportunities through either levels or through the volume price analysis or through applying the indicators as well you're looking for those levels to get into those particular positions and take advantage of them you can see here across the piece certainly in terms of 5 10 15 across the across the top line there the trend monitor is supporting and what's interesting about the trend monitor is this if i flick open the five minute here 
This was quite an extensive congestion phase we had. You can see the trend monitor. Anna had the trend dots. The trend dots, I haven't got them on here just for clarity, but if I had them on here, they would have uh, transitioned into a different color, certainly through this phase here. And these are the regions when you're in a congestion phase and you've maybe jumped on a trend and then you move into a congestion phase and you start to stress about it. That's when the emotion starts to kick in and that's when you need something like the trend monitor because what it does down here, as you can see, we have the transitional into a darker blue. So the trend monitor is saying, yep, yeah, this trend is looking perhaps a little bit weak. Now I can assure you the trend dots will have already transitioned first. That's their function. They're close to price action, but the trend monitor is a little bit further away. We went into the darker blue. We even went from there into a darker red, looking as though potentially we could be reversing into a full-blown uh, reversal from bullish to bearish. Then we had some transitional colors back and forth, and then we went back into the blue. So that's what was going on in terms of five. In terms of 10, not a flicker, and in terms of 15, nothing at all either. So it's another aspect of using uh, multiple time frames to have the trend monitor in place. And as you see, everything coming up from the faster time frame, everything happens from the fastest through to the slowest. So it will come up from a one minute, for example, or even a 15 second if you're on Ninja and you've got that sort of time frame running. And then it will start to ripple right the way through across here into this one, down to that one, down to the 30, etc., through the 60, and ultimately down to daily, if it is a true reversal and a change in trend. And that's what you're looking for the whole time. And if you were trading this on a slightly slower perspective, maybe you're on the 10 and the 15, when you see this sort of perspective coming in, you think it's this, yep, okay, I can see that. And then it reverses back into bright blue again, maybe and you're holding it and you're thinking, okay, terrific. You know, this is helping me stay in this position and you've managed to stay in here. Now what's happening, we've got this reversal under, underway. No great surprise, why? Because we've got the London Open. You're always looking for reversals around the London Open in all markets because that's what happens when London opens. It's the biggest, they like to reverse. They like to get traders into positions in weakness, certainly in the run up through the Euro, Europe Open. And then you get these very strong reversals coming. We've got the increase in volume. You can see it rising here. And the, the chart is telling you that we've got some, some pause points in place and possibly reversals as well. If I head over to the uh, CSI, let's just go over to, here we go. <clears throat> I've got various time frames. This is on five. Just wait for that to freshen up. Take a, there we go. Okay, fine. And what we're seeing right now is what we expect to see because we're on the five minute CSI, and what we're seeing is the uh, Aussie dollar, this blue line, it was uh, it moved up into overbought and now we're starting to see it kick down. We're starting to see that selling coming in. But equally and just as important, we're also starting to see buying of the Japanese yen come in here as well. That was getting down towards oversold, but that's now starting to kick up. And that's the reason we're starting to see that, uh, that, that reversal in what was quite a strongly bullish move and certainly at the very least a pause point. Go up onto 10. Just wait for that to, to, to load as well. You can see here these, we've had the, the decent selling of the Japanese yen. We're flip-flopping around in the oversold area, exactly the same with the Aussie. And if you wanted to get into a reversal position right now, you'd certainly be looking at that as one opportunity. Another one, certainly very heavy selling of the Swiss franc here on 10 minutes. I think that's also reflected on five. Yep, it is. That's on 10. Let's go up to 15. Very heavy selling of the Swiss franc there, continuing, as you can see, uh, counterbalanced by very strong buying of the Canadian dollar, this purple line. Now, at some point, that is going to reverse, and that is certainly one, if you went out to 30, it will still be carrying on, but at some point, that is going to reverse, and it would be a candidate for a reversal opportunity, a reversal trade. But the price you pay for getting into that position is that may carry on for a little bit. It's, it's, there's no guarantee that we're going to see that reverse. You can see it here on the Japanese yen. We're flip-flopping around here. We're in a congestion. The Aussie is flatlining, but it's very overbought at the moment. So at some point, that's going to reverse and give a great trade to the downside. It's just a question of being patient. And in being patient, you have to set wider stop losses. You can look at it here, for example. This is all the oscillation you get with a pair when it's up here. There's no guarantee this is going to roll over and deliver a smooth trend to the downside, but at some point it will reverse. It has to because it's very overbought. 
and getting into that position, you've got to set a wider stop loss. So in this example, if you're trading this intraday, you might have to set a 20 pip or even a 25 pip stop loss. But if you're trading it on the trend, once the trend's underway, then you can set a much tighter stop loss. Let's just head back to the charts for a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll just switch off for a moment. Apologies. And what it all comes down to is time frame. Are you a scalping trader on five or going right down to the extreme on the daily? Are you looking at this as a reversal on the daily? And that's really what it comes down to. You have to, anyone on the daily chart right now, if you were looking at this as a daily opportunity, you're really not interested in five, 10, 15, 30. You might be looking at the hourly, for example, to get a perspective. But you're certainly not interested in all the oscillations that are going on in here right now what you're looking at is yeah we've got a nice trend underway let's just um refresh that <clears throat> excuse me sorry i loaded all these charts up up yesterday there we go um what you're looking at is you're looking at this chart for a much longer term opportunity how does it look how is it shaping up trend monitor certainly blue you've got the climbing trend line of the which is the second indicator which comes with the trend monitor it just gives you a perspective on the strength of the trend and also how far it is away from this datum line which is zero this is the crossover point so you can see we've got rising trend strength nice blue uh, trend monitor which is great vpoc is well below now so we've got well developed uh, bullish sentiment very strong platform of support which was breached here uh, was resistance but it's become support minor level up here at uh, 75.90 so a little bit of support there but what's nice about the chart is we're pushing up into very low levels of volume up here and you can see the speed the markets move through these regions this is very heavy it's very condensed there's lots of resistance in here from a volume perspective but as you move higher up the chart then it becomes ever lighter and as we get up into this region at 76 and beyond there's very lightweight volume so the resistance from a volume perspective is very is, is insignificant really and that should give you encouragement that the market is not going to require such effort to move through there and in addition to that therefore the corollary is it will move relatively swiftly through that particular region of price and then your then it's a decision are you a scalping trader what's your window opportunity are you looking at this as 5 10 15 or are you looking down here at the 60s and the dailies you're looking for this for a potential reversal from the longer term bearish sentiment and a reversal into bullish sentiment in due course. I'm just gonna pass back to Anna if I may. I just brought the heat map up again because we're just tracking on the on the Euro Aussie. Oh, here it is. It's sort of jumping. It's at spot six. And looking across the cells we see here, we can see them red uh, across the time frames because you can also use the heat map to help you monitor on the on the faster time frame. What it also does it it tells you there's this thing about. I, I think I re right I'll start again. I, I read a headline the other day that says, "Are you a trend? Are you a, a trend or a counter trend trader?" And my answer to that is, "Well, you'll always be a counter trend trader <laughs> because where you're trading in one time frame is bound is always going to be at odds with what is going on in another time frame." So it's a kind of um, what's the word I'm looking at that being so rude about the time? It's kind of a misnomer, a misnomer, a misnomer. So, you know, if you are on the, um, to take a silly example, you're on the 15 minute chart and you're, you're in a cell on the Euro Aussie, well, you're counter trend trading against what's going on on the, on the monthly chart and on the weekly chart. I know that's an extreme example, but that's what I'm trying to, let's find a better example. Uh, the closer time frame, Euro pound, well, it's obviously being bought in the minute, the five and the 15, but it's still on a cell up on the, on the four hour. The numbers here are quite, useful to to uh, keep an eye on as well because they also tell you although that might be on a sell on the four hour because the number is quite uh, is quite low in fact it's, it's done exactly what i um 
but I wanted it to do. The kind of it kind of gives you a visual picture without you going to have a look at the chart. Is whether the move in the slower time frame is actually running out of steam as well, and possibly moving is going to click into what is happening in the faster time frames. So, for example, here let's take this one. You can see the euro pound. We know it's being bought because we've got we've got green cells here. Then the 30 minutes, but it's only uh, a very low value here and on the hour and on the importantly on the four hours there's obviously some kind of pullback on uh, the hour which is actually supporting the um, uh, the move in the faster time frame so the indicator can be used in lots of different ways but uh, looking at the euro was he here as i said i've got red 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 and then i've got these two which haven't all clicked in into red yet which is the weekly and the monthly but it's these values that i'm interested i'm interested in because if you look at the monthly chart for the dollar CAD, for example, it's up at 259. The value for the euro Aussie is only at 40. Now that tells me that the, the, it's obviously weaker than this pair here. Uh, that is a very strong number. So the reversal, if and when it comes in the in the dollar CAD, is a little way off at the at, at, at the moment, based on just on the values that the uh, that the uh, heat map is giving. It, the heat map, as I said, it's a um, it's a very, very sophisticated indicator. You can use it on many, many different levels. Level one is simply looking at the ranking of the pairs, as I said, which is the which are the strongest, which are, well, they're going to the other end of the, as we can see here. And in fact, if you look at the numbers on and compare them with the pound yen, as you can see here, that's 412. You've got the Aussie yen at 500. What does that tell you? That's on the monthly chart. This is going to have to be a mother and father of all efforts to actually rise from, I wouldn't say the dead, but the, uh, almost dead at the bottom of the chart. So as I said, you, it gives you a, a, a sense of the effort that it's going to be needed to actually shift these pairs off the bottom. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's just the amount of effort, i.e. volume, that is going to be required. And certainly with the M pair, <coughs> it's going to also involve a, a major, major shift in market sentiment. So, anything else you want to add to that, David, or not? That's it. That's fine. Uh, let me quickly just let's see what's happening the rest of the day. This is the um, it's actually Ascension Day today. So it's a bank holiday. Well, certainly in Italy, they haven't put Italy down. It's definitely a, a bank holiday in Italy. Uh, the forex market, I think, is still opening. Uh, but the most uh, the most important piece of um, uh, fundamental news today is actually preliminary GDP in the US. That's at 1.30. What time do we start? 12. It was just before we start the New York session. So it's great, actually, because it's a key piece of news, particularly what's happening on the trade front and, and, and what's happening with the Fed, etc. So that's a, that's a, <coughs> it's a nice piece of news to have uh, when we start the next session. And importantly, for the end... The oh, yes, and is still ticking up, so obviously feeling a little bit uh, more cheerful. Tomorrow is also an imp is obviously end of month, uh, and there'll be a lot of um, it tends to be quite positive for dollar at the end of the month. But it, crucially, tomorrow uh, the the first PMI is coming out from China, which is the manufacturing PMI, and this is the number that the market is really going to uh, latch on tomorrow. As I said, given what is happening. Uh, in uh, you know the background to China US thing. Um, normally, as they come out on the first week of the month, so if coming out on the 31st of uh, so the last day of this month is a little bit of I don't know I've, I've, I've never seen that before. Have you, David? Really seen on the last day of uh, I would have expected to come over the weekend. Hmm. Anyway, and then next week, of course, we we're into the PMIs as well and just finally what have i got here the fear and greed index here we are we are at extreme fear but bear in mind this is um this works this will be updated once the uh, the us market opens so we'll see if that dial can uh, uh will, will shift and what that tells you is which currency is likely to be bought or sold and in this case most definitely the Japanese yen and quickly over at investing.com we've got oh, we've got a tick up on the S&P futures let's have a look at the bond market that's the one everyone is um oh yeah the um the yield is uh, coming that's been falling quite heavily but it's a tick up back just sentiment this is what you have to uh, you know be aware of understand what's this this is the uh, background music if you like to your trading and 
as I said, and if it feels a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, um, that's perfectly normal and perfectly uh, um, acceptable. More reasons to join the programme. More reasons to join the programme, exactly. So you know what the, what, to distinguish, as we say, the signal from the noise, as it were. But the best analogy I can give you is if you, I'm sure you can all remember what it was like when we first got into a car trying to learn to drive. We, you know, the, we were totally uncoordinated, disorganised, trying to think, oh my God, can I, well, in those days you had to sort of use a, a gear change. I mean, most cars are automatic these days. You had, to, you had three pedals. To, um, uh, to deal with and you had only two feet of what were you going to do and, and a steering wheel and try not to crash into anything and you know, of course it's a silly example but uh, what do you do now you simply get in your car you don't even think about it because it all comes together and trading is a bit like that and uh, as I said but hopefully if you Im if you adopt VPA hopefully our indicators as well it'll be like getting in the car and just simply driving away with confidence. Anything you want to say to that? We are back uh, at 12.45. 12 Hope you can join us then. If not, we are back next Thursday. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions, as I said, just drop me an email, anna at anacooling.com or david at quantumtrading.com. Enjoy the rest of the trading day, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.